welcome back to DIY Boomboxes in Texas. My name is Phil, your host, and we're going to be talking about uh, something today. I've gotten a few requests to do this video. As some of you know, I have a mega boombox that I'm in the process of working on right now. And I have two of the components here for the bone box. I'm going to show you that I'm going to be doing something rather unique I've never done before. And uh, maybe it might be something you guys might want to do on your projects. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, inside the boom box, we're going to have a 12-volt power supply. And this is one that I have here. It's a Meanwell uh, power supply. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, just up front, when you go to buy your power supplies, do not buy the ones that are $19.99. Those are junk. And there's many, many videos showing you on YouTube about how, how to rewire these because they're junk. This one was $50, and it's a mean well. It's a very good brand, and it's, it's worth the money. So anyway, that being said, I'm going to be running a power supply most of the time on my mega boom box, but also I'm going to have a couple of lead acid batteries to do two things. Number one, these are going to run the radio when it's outside away from electricity, but also they're going to provide memory for the radio as well. Now the important thing to remember is you cannot hook up a power supply and a lead acid battery or any other type of battery to the same circuit unless you make some changes that we're going to do, and I'll tell you why. What's going to happen is, if you turn on the power supply while the battery is hooked up, the power supply is going to try to charge the battery. And it's going to put a load on the battery, but it's also going to put a load on the power supply that it's not designed to take. And two things are going to happen, or both might happen. Either your power supply is going to burn up, and you're going to ruin it, your batteries are going to get overcharged and it's going to ruin the batteries or actually both might happen and I've actually had this happen to me before so what can we do to solve this problem to be able to have a battery and a power supply in the same circuit well the answer is right here this is called a relay or a multi-pin relay as a matter of fact and what a relay is is basically it's an electronic switch is what it is and with the different pins on here that's what makes this relay very unique and the relay is tripped by elect electricity or this uh, 12 volts so in this case the relay let's say would be in the off position when 12 volts is applied either from a battery or a power supply to the power pins on the back here it'll uh, actually trip the relay. Now you have relays in your cars and most people don't even realize that that what relays are used for a lot is if you have like a little switch on your dashboard of your car that turns on your headlight. Well that little switch is not connected directly to the headlights because that little switch cannot handle enough current that it takes to run your headlights. So what happens is that little switch runs to a relay and the relay can handle the heavier current. And that little switch when you turn on your headlights in your car will turn on the relay and the relay will allow the current to flow to your headlights, turning your headlights on. And there's all different types of relays here. Now, we're going to be using this 14 pin relay and the reason we're doing that is because it has four contacts that are normally open and four contacts that are normally closed. And by normally closed it is just like having a switch permanently in the on position. So what that's going to allow us to do is, when the relay is tripped in the off position, we're going to hook it up with a battery, runs through the normally closed part of the relay, and then that power will go to the battery. Now what we're going to do is we're going to power supply up to the power terminals on the relay. And what that's going to do is, when the power supply comes on, we're also going to run the power for the radio through the normally open side of the relay. And what that's going to do is it's going to close the switch. So it's going to turn turn on the power until the power supply comes through. And it's going to turn off the current from the battery. And it's going to be seamless. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm explaining this as well as I can. What I'm about to do is I'm going to hook everything up and we're going to talk through it 
step by step and I hope to explain to you how the relay works and how you can incorporate it in your project. Now this is not a beginner's project. So if you guys are just first getting into building boom boxes, learning about circuitry and everything, this is not a project for you. I've been doing this for about a year now. I also have a background in electronics and that's what gave me the idea to use a relay. And But maybe you're going to learn something for later on. Um, you might want to incorporate this into your project. I think it'd be really cool. So let me get all this wired up and um, so you can see how everything's going to go together. And we're going to take it step by step of how it works. So uh, I'll be back in a minute. Hey everybody, I'm back. And believe it or not, it's about 24 hours later, if you can believe it. Or I'd say more like 18 hours. Um, it took me quite a while to get everything hooked up the way I want it. I had some problems with the relay shutting down slowly and losing the memory on the radio, but I'll explain all that in a minute. I have everything hooked up. Now it does look a little complicated, and I'm not going to lie, it is a little bit complicated, but I use different color wires to try to explain everything a little bit easier. So if this goes over your head the first time, don't worry. This is advanced electronics. A lot of people don't have any experience with relays and power supplies and things like that because I'm doing something I've actually never done before and that's why it took me so long to figure out how to do it. And I've got an electronics background. So anyway guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move the camera off the tripod and hold the camera in my hand. I'll try to keep it as steady as I possibly can. And I'm going to go through here and show you the different things that we have going on here on the table and how they all work together because what we're trying to do here is we have a battery and a power supply and we would like to run the radio I'm just using this old radio here as a prop we want to run the radio on both different power supplies you want to have it on the battery when we're not near electricity but also you want the battery to run the memory on the radio at the same time when we're in the house we want to plug it into 1 and 10 you can see the plug right here and power the power supply the problem comes when you have the power supply and the, and the, the uh, battery tied into the same circuit, both going to the radio. The problem is the power supply will try to charge the battery. And the power supply is not designed to do that. It's only designed to run your components. And what's going to happen is with that kind of a load on it, it's going to overheat the battery and eventually damage the battery. And if not, or both, it will also burn up the components in the power supply and ruin your power supply. So you're talking with the battery and the power supply, $75 worth of parts that get ruined. So what the relay is going to do is the relay allows two different things to come into one place and it separates them into two different things. And I'm going to explain that in just a minute. So give me just a minute here. I'm going to move the camera and explain everything to you. Okay, guys, we're a lot closer now. And I'm looking at the viewfinder, so I'm seeing what you're seeing. So let me show you what we have going on over here right now. That's our 12 volt battery that we have as our battery power source. This is our Minwell power supply. It's 30 amps, putting out 12 volts. And you can see the green and white and black wires. Those are coming from over here. And you can see it's got regular 120 volt house power. And for you guys who live out of the country, uh, in the United States we use 120 volts to power our devices instead of 220 like you use there in uh, out of the country and you can see here the switch how it's wired up now what I originally had planned on doing was just running the power supply on this switch right here this switch is going to be mounted on the back of the radio now let me show you what else we have going on over here this is our relay this is our 14 pin relay and I'm going to explain everything that's going on with the relay as you can see here we have wires coming in from the radio, I mean, I mean, excuse me, from the battery and the power supply, and I'll explain all that in a minute. And of course, this is our radio. This is just for mock-up right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this radio on and uh, just put it on a dummy station. I hooked up two uh, speakers in this just for demonstration purposes. So you can see the radio there. Now, let me show you what's going on. So right now, we're strictly running off the battery power. Now the way the relay works is you have several pins 
as you can see there, coming in. Those are all the inputs that you have right here. And these are going to be your outputs across here. And these two down here are where the power comes in. Now a relay is just a big electronic switch. And what happens is, some of these contacts here, the ones here on the bottom, are called normally closed. Which means it's just like a switch in the on position. With no power going to the relay. So you can see the black wire and the red wire coming from the battery. They're going into these two terminals. And they're coming out to what's called the common terminals. Which are these two terminals right here. And the white wire is coming out and going to power the radio. And I'm using the yellow wire as the ground wire going to the radio. So you're hot in your ground. The red and the black wire on this side are taking power to the relay. Now that power is going to be coming from the power supply right there. You can see on the power supply we have a pink wire and a purple wire. That's going to one side of the relay and then the red wire and the black wire are actually going to be powering the relay. And what's, what's happening is when you turn the power supply on what happens is the contacts right here you can see the pink wire is the hot, the purple wire is the ground coming from the power supply. These two contacts are called normally open which means this is like an off switch but when electricity is applied to the relay from the power supply, the relay will turn on and you'll hear it click. And let me go ahead and do that for you right now. You'll hear it click. You hear that little click there? Now the relay is turned on, but we still have power going over here to our radio. What's happened is the relay has now turned off the power coming from the battery. It switched that to the off position. And now the power coming in from the power supply, it has switched that to the on position. And all four of these terminals come out to these two terminals right here. Let me get my pencil here to point. These are called common terminals. And you can see we have four of them because over here we have more places to hook up more items here on this relay. If you want to control, you know, up to six things. Or four things, I should say. So Right now, the relay is turned on, and we're getting power to the, to the radio from the power supply. Now, what I had to do was, is I had to install this switch right here. And the reason I did that was I was turning off the power supply from this switch right here. And that was my original plan, because I had this on the back and turn off the power supply. Now, what should happen, when you flip this switch, the relay contacts should flip back automatically to the battery side cutting off power from the power supply but the power supply also will be turning off because it's turning off the power right here. The problem is inside of a power supply you have these things called capacitors and the best way I can describe capacitors it's it's like a little reservoir that holds the charge and doles it out at a certain amount and what happens is when you shut off the power at this switch you still have power in the capacitors coming from the power supply to the relay and the relay is not going to trip until those capacitors are, are drained. It takes about one to one and a half seconds. The problem is, in the meantime, the radio is not getting any power, and so the radio will shut off until the relay trips back and it powers back up from the battery. And when that happens, you're going to lose your memory on your radio, which if you don't care about the memory, this setup will work perfectly fine. You wouldn't need the switch if you don't listen to the radio. Now I'm, I like to have the memory presets and the clock presets on my radio so I'm not too happy about that. So what I do with this switch here is by flipping the switch I'm killing the power going from the power supply to the relay. And you'll hear the relay click back. You know that little click there? And as you can see the radio still in that station doesn't know the difference between the battery and the power supply. So now we're on power supply and power, but the power supply is still turned on because it's still getting power. So what I'm going to have to do is reach back here and turn off the power to the power supply. Now the switch stays lit up all the time showing you have electricity until you unplug it from the wall. But the power supply is now off and now we're running on the power supply 
courtesy of the relay. Again, we have the red and the black wires coming in from the battery, the pink and the purple are coming from the power supply, and these are the two wires going to the radio, and these are your two wires here that are powering the relay. Now, you can power the relay with a battery as well if you wanted to do just the opposite from what I'm doing. But like I said, by installing this switch right here, what that does is that disconnects the power immediately from the power supply to the relay, so the relay will trip instantaneously. So I hope that um, helps you understand the relays. What I'm planning on doing is I'm just going to install this switch on the front of the box with my other switches, and this will be on the back. So what I'll do is I'll plug the power supply in when I want to listen to it at home, flip the switch on, and then what I'll do to go to battery power, because right now the power supply is on, but you're still getting power to the radio through the battery because with the relay, the power supply and the batteries will never touch. That's the nice thing about this. They'll never know each other exists. They're like two ships passing in the night. Now when I flip this switch, now the power supply is powering the radio. The batteries have been disconnected and the radio doesn't know the difference. That's the nice thing about that. So this is just one way to uh, set up your setup there. Uh, like I said, there's other ways you could do it. You could use some double pull, double throw switches. I did that in the past. Um, I kind of like the relay method because with the double pull, double throw switches, I found that the problem is the if you don't flip the switches in the right sequence, you can either erase the memory on your bat on your radio, or the power supply and the batteries can be on the line at the same time. And this way, with the relay, they will never touch. These two guys are neighbors, and they will never know each other. So, anyway, if you guys would like to know what I'm using, I'm using the Minwell, uh, Minwell power supply. It's $50 on Amazon. It works great. Uh, don't buy those cheap power supplies. And I'm also using the Chrome battery, Extreme Sports battery. And I actually have two of them. I'm going to be wired together. It's 9 amp hours. And this one here, wired with the other one, give me a total of 18 amp hours. Or it should run the radio for about 8 to 10 hours just on battery charge. Now somebody asked me how am I going to charge the batteries. That was a really good question and what I'm going to do is if you see my other videos, you've seen those little uh, brass terminals I put on the back, uh, my, my supplies, that, my radios that have the lead acid batteries in them and on those two terminals you just clamp your battery charger and the terminals will be connected directly to the batteries to charge the batteries when they need to be charged. So that's how we're going to charge the batteries and that's about it, guys. Um, I will do my once I I have to upload the video through my phone, so I can't post any links through my phone. So once I get this set up here, I will go ahead and give you guys a link to. Uh, once I get back on my computer, I'll give you a link to the relay. I'll give you a link to the power supply, the batteries, the switches, and this little gem right here. Um, I'm using a 10-foot cord that I bought from my Mega Boombox. And this is all this you see here is going to be going into the mega boom box you guys have heard me talk about. And I think it's going to be really cool. If you have any questions, please contact me at I Love All Things Radio. That's my Facebook page. I'm going to put it right here at the bottom of the screen. And well, that's my Facebook group, not my page. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have about relays or power supplies or batteries or building your own radio. Or if you would like me to build one of your own. If you just don't feel you have the skills or you want one custom built for yourself, feel free to ask me to do that. I've built many for several, many, many people, and they're very, very happy with them. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope this answered some of your questions about relays and give you a sneak preview of what I'm going to be doing in the Mega Boom Box. So, thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. See you next time.